One of the most powerful integrations you can make with Firestore is Algolia. It converts your Firestore database into a full-text search engine, which means that you can build instant search features that are extremely fast and sophisticated. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to automatically index all of your data in Firestore using cloud functions, and then we'll build an instant search feature on the front end using Angular 6. If you're new here, make sure to like and subscribe, and you can grab the full source code from angularfirebase.com. If you've been following the channel for a while, you might remember episode 27, where we created an Algolia feature with the real-time database. But a lot has changed since then. We now have Firestore, Cloud Functions 1.0, Angular 6, and Algolia also released their own Angular Instant Search component library. And I think this is a really important topic because I end up using Algolia in a lot of projects that I work on. It provides a great developer experience and also a great user experience for search. What we're building today is just a simple full text search feature, but it will set you up to index your data in Algolia so you can build more complex features on top of it. Every time we save a document to the Firestore database, it will trigger a cloud function that will then transmit that data over to Algolia so it can be indexed on their servers. Once it's indexed, you can then query it using one of their client-side APIs. In this case, we're using Angular, but you could also use iOS, React, or whatever you want. To get started, you'll need to sign up for an Algolia account, and they do have a free tier that's pretty generous. And we'll also choose a data center. I'm just going with one in the US that has the lowest latency. After you sign up, head over to the Indices tab, and then we'll create our first index. You can think of an index as just a collection that you want to search across. In our case, it'll be a single Firestore collection, but you could even combine multiple subcollections into a single index to search across all of your subcollections throughout your Firestore database. Now that we have our index created, we need to add some data to it with a Firebase Cloud function. But first I want to show you some of the crazy things that you can do with Algolia. For example, you can tweak the search ranking formula to control how the results are returned back to the front end. You can tweak the typo tolerance for the user's search input. You can customize the synonyms if you have really specific domain logic or jargon that needs to be used in your index. And that's just barely scratching the surface. You have a ton of control over how the search engine works. And you don't have to write a single line of code to make it work the way you want. Enough of that for now, let's go ahead and get this thing built. Head over to the API keys and grab your application ID as well as your admin API key. Make sure to only use your admin API key in a secure backend like Firebase Cloud Functions. Don't put it in your client-side Angular app. Now I'm running Firebase init functions, which creates a function directory in the root of the project, and we'll make sure to select the TypeScript option. Then cd into the functions directory and run npm install Algolia search. This is Algolia's node SDK that we can use to update items in the index. But before we can use it, we need to set our API keys in the Cloud Functions environment. Run Firebase Functions config set, then Algolia.API ID, and Algolia.API key. Replace the quotes with your actual Algolia credentials, and then run the command. Now let's write the Cloud Function for adding and removing items from the index. You'll be surprised at how easy this is. Let's go ahead and define a variable called env that holds our functions environment variables. Then we'll import the Algolia search SDK. Then we'll initialize it with our app ID and our admin API key. Then we'll set another variable for our index. Note that you can use multiple indices in a single cloud function. The first function we'll set up will run whenever a new document is created in Firestore. And when that happens, we want to upload it to the Algolia index. So we're listening to the create event on the zoo collection. And then when that happens, we want to retrieve the data from the newly created document, which we can do by calling snap.data. And every index item in Algolia also has an object ID. We can set this equal to the Firestore document ID just to keep things consistent. Then literally all we have to do is return a promise from this function that adds the item to the index, which we can do by calling index add object with our data and object ID. And that's it, we're entirely done with this cloud function. But we might also want to remove items from the index if a document is deleted. We can do that just as easily by listening to the same collection but the on delete event. And then we'll grab the object ID and remove it from the index when that document is deleted. And that's our entire backend for Algolia. Everything happens in the background and it really shouldn't get too much more complicated than this because we can control everything from the Algolia dashboard. Let's go ahead and deploy this function by running Firebase deploy only functions, and then we'll test it out. 
On my front end here in Angular, I have a button that will add some random animal data to our zoo collection in Firestore. When that happens, it should trigger that cloud function and index our data in Algolia. So you can see here it added a couple new animals to the collection. Then if we switch over to the functions log, we should see that our functions were deployed successfully and that they're being invoked when these documents are created. Everything is looking good there. Let's jump over to the Algolia dashboard and see if our data is there as well. When we refresh the page, you can see that our empty index is now populated with the items from our Firestore database. This means that we can search for text inside of these documents and it will be robust to typos and work across multiple properties. Now, building out the front end is going to be just as easy because Algolia provides a component library for Angular. With just a few components, we'll be able to get search functionality that looks like this. It will automatically populate the results when the user types into the form. You'll notice here that it not only searches for the name of the animal, but it will also search for text contained within other properties on that document. And it will also highlight the matching text in the search result. We'll need to add our API keys to Angular, but this time make sure to only use the search only API key. Then inside your Angular project, go into the environment TS file and add an object named Algolia with your app ID and API key. You can also see we have a Firebase object here. That's because we have Angular Fire 2 installed. You'll want to follow the install instructions on the official repo. From here, we can install instant search into our Angular project. The next thing we'll do is import the ng-ais module in our app module. And currently there's one other little thing we have to do, and that's go into the polyfills.ts file and add this little piece of code to prevent instant search from throwing an error. I also want to show you how I generate the dummy data for the index, and I'm using a library called chance.js to make that a little easier. It's not something you'd use in production, but it is pretty fun to mess around with. Because Algolia gives us access to a whole bunch of components to use for instant search, we can just build out everything directly in the app component. Let's go ahead and import Angular Firestore, the environment variables we set earlier, and chance.js. Then we need to define the configuration variables for our actual Algolia instance. It will need the API keys from our Algolia environment, as well as the index name. Then it's going to show all the results by default, so I want to disable that behavior, so I'm setting up another variable here called show results. Then I'm setting up an event handler function that will listen to the changes in the input form, and if the actual query has length, then we'll show the results, otherwise we'll just keep it blank. And for those who are curious, this is how we generate the dummy data. We'll set up a method here that creates a new instance of chance, and then chance has a whole bunch of different helper methods on it that generate random data. So we can just set up a handful of properties as our animal data, and then we'll go ahead and set that data in the Firestore database, which eventually is going to trigger that cloud function and then index the same data in Algolia. If we switch over to the HTML, the first thing we'll do is add a button that will add a new animal to the database when clicked. And then the most important thing is that we have this ng-ais component that is the context for the Algolia search instance. It will take our configuration options as an input argument. And then we can set up a search box that will listen to that search changed event handler so we know when to show the results. Algolia returns an array of hits and we can loop over each hit and provide it with its own custom template. So this is how you customize the actual search results, which is probably the most important part for the user experience. Inside of the actual hit, there's a component called ng-ais highlight that will highlight the text if it's included in the user's query. You just need to pass it the attribute name as well as the hit itself as input properties. So that gives us a very basic search, but there's a whole bunch of other widgets built into the library to do things like pagination and filtering and things like that. Overall, Algolia provides a great developer experience, and they don't pay me to say that. I'm just a happy customer. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you want to learn more advanced techniques, consider becoming a pro member at angularfirebase.com. You'll get a free copy of my book and a whole bunch of resources designed to help you build and ship your app faster. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.